Mindset shift from hobbyist to professional. In part one of the first of many concepts that we're gonna be going through in our series, Building a Sustainable Music Career, I wanna start off by talking about the most important thing, the thing that really sets the foundation for everything else, and that is our mindset. Firstly, before I say anything else, let me just say, this was not an easy thing to commit to. It's taken a lot of work, a lot of research to put all of these concepts together, really understand them for myself before sharing them with you. I'm really happy that you're here. I'm really happy that you're watching this. And I hope that this helps you in your journey for whatever type of sustainable career you're trying to build for yourself. I'll be breaking this up into two parts. In this part, I'm gonna be talking about three different things that we need to focus on when trying to build the right mindset for a sustainable career. Now, like I said in the intro, although I'm gonna be focusing on primarily my experience in the music industry, all of these concepts will work for anyone seeking out a sustainable career in music or otherwise. So regardless if you're in the music industry, if you're a content creator or an entrepreneur trying to start a new company, you're in the right place. Finding your forward compass. Finding your forward compass is so important. It really comes down to one word, why? Why are you doing what it is that you're doing or what it is that you're striving to do? For me, I grew up in a musical family. A lot of people grow up in musical families. That is actually not my forward compass. That's not my why. I started at the age of three playing piano. A year later, I started playing violin. And then four years after that, I started playing saxophone. But it wasn't until a month after I graduated from high school, when my mom passed away, that I really committed to music as a career. It was some of the hardest times of my life. It was really, really tough. One of the last gifts my mom gave me before she passed away was a saxophone. For many years, I was playing alto saxophone, but eventually decided to switch to the tenor saxophone. But the saxophone that I had, I was borrowing from the school. So with the little money that my mom had left, she decided to buy me a saxophone for my graduation present. Literally, my mom passed away, and two months after that, I was off to college, living in a dorm, by myself, away from my family, trying to figure out life. I found myself in practice rooms, creating music, writing different songs at that time. Honestly, most of those songs, I don't even remember, but it was really at that time when I felt like I was using music to really cure my soul. These moments all culminated to me deciding that music would always be my focal point. The thing that I would do with my life for the rest of my life. Finding your forward compass is so important. What is your why? Why are you doing what it is that you're doing? And really think about this. If your why doesn't align with your values, what you want from your life, then you should really investigate what it is that you're doing and see if you need to make a change. And also, just FYI, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as my story, but my story is my life and that's what you need to lean on. Lean on what makes you unique. Regardless of what it is, your why is so important. So really take the time to find that forward compass. Remember, every mindset that we're going through is building the foundation for all of the things that we're gonna stack on top. A tall building can't stand strong without a strong foundation. Turning your imposter syndrome into a superpower. We have to unmask the self-doubt the negative self-talk, all of the things that are holding us back from embracing our unique background and expertise. So what is imposter syndrome? And why is it important for us to overcome this so that we can really step into our full potential as a full-blown professional? Well, ask yourself, are you doing something that feels disingenuous? Are you doing it because you absolutely love it? Or are you doing it because you're just chasing someone else's success? 
for an example, when I shifted from primarily playing in bands to then going to primarily playing with DJs and as a DJ, I had to ask myself many different questions. One, am I doing this just for the money? Two, am I too old to be doing this? And three, I already spent so much time building my career in bands, do I really want to start over as a DJ? At the end of the day, it was a big yes. And the reason why is because I've always considered myself as a performer performing for people that dance. Most of the jazz bands and bands that I was performing with we're playing for people sitting down in chairs, listening, analyzing the music, but not necessarily enjoying it with their bodies. I wanted to be a part of a culture where people were there to dance. Hooking up with my friends at Cache Life and Soul in the Horn, doing sets in those environments really opened my eyes to a whole new way in which I wanted to pursue my career. And yeah, I had to put in the work. I really went against the grain. Most musicians play with other musicians all of a sudden, I was primarily playing with DJs or DJing and playing saxophone with tracks that I hadn't produced myself, which was a stark difference from what I had been doing for most of my career, playing my own original music with live bands. But as soon as I really understood why I was doing it, plus combining that with my forward compass, the real big why of why I do music, the vow I made after my mom passed away, there was just no looking back after seeing people dancing to the music that I was performing versus just sitting down. Don't forget, these mindsets, they're all connected. Knowing your big why, that forward compass, is important. Unmasking that imposter syndrome and really seeing it as your superpower is the next step in that importance. Smart goals in the 12 week year. Smart goals are a concept many businesses use. Smart translates to specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-based goals. They're a great way to keep you on track while you're striving towards your sustainable career. I recently read, well, listen to a book called The 12 Week Year. Shout out to Eldre, a YouTuber, lo-fi producer, who I first heard about this book from. Moral of the story, we put so much focus on New Year's resolutions only to really forget about all of the goals we set by the time March hits. Instead of having New Year's goals, this year I set out to have 12 week goals so that the smart goals that I set for myself are from week one to week 12. Once I hit that 12 weeks, I evaluate all of the goals that I set and set completely new goals for myself in those next 12 weeks. Coupling understanding SMART goals with using those SMART goals within 12 weeks instead of a full year will allow you to accomplish so much more, four times as much in one year than you would have otherwise. And the cool thing about setting 12-week goals is you really start to understand your own capabilities Abilities. As an example, for my first 12 weeks of this year, one of my goals was to hit 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Well, now I have this many subscribers on YouTube, so I've had to constantly up my goal every week, seeing that the possibilities were actually bigger than I first initially thought. So for you, take this week, understand your why. What is your forward compass? Dispel the imposter syndrome, knowing that you actually have a superpower. And once the negativity is out and the mindset is set, create your SMART goals within a 12 week period. All right, fam, that's it for this one. Next week, we'll go through a set of three more mindset shifts. And until then, let's have a conversation in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed because at the end of the series, we'll be doing a giveaway and remember these mindset shifts this is the foundation for building your sustainable career music or otherwise so really take the time to go through these three and i'll see you on the next one for the next three peace we're really doing this